the Spirit of God is with you and also with you. Welcome to this virtual gathering of Washington Avenue Christian Church. My name is Nathan Russell, and my pronouns are he and him, and I serve this congregation as its senior pastor. Thank you for welcoming and inviting us into your various viewing locations for The Alternative, an online gathering to reconnect with God and with one another. You are welcome and wanted here and wherever you may be and just however you are. This gathering is an alternative to the myriad things that grab our attention and time and an opportunity to reconnect, rejoin, and remember. Together we will sing, hear, pray, share, and commune. Our director of worship and the arts, Evan Collins, will lead us in the hymns and the lyrics will appear on your screen. We hope you will do whatever helps you create meaning and connect with the divine. May you sense God's presence in new ways, alternative ways, ways that are life-giving, loving, and liberating. We are in the season of Advent, and so our curtains are purple, and the artwork behind me is as mysterious as it is wondrous. The candles of hope, peace, and joy of our Advent wreath are already glowing. And now, we ring this chime. To clear the air, because our worship of God is about to begin. As we prepare to lift our hearts, will you join me in a query? A query is an ancient practice of asking a question. You can engage this question with a viewing partner or by yourself in the live chat that's off to the side or with me on Twitter using our church's handle at W-A-C-C-E-L-Y-R-I-A. The question is this, who are your sheroes.
heart is overflowing with gladness and with praise. The God who guards my going gives meaning to my days. Holy, the rock of ages, known in word and deed, giving the victory, fulfilling my every need. The living God has spoken. Earth answers with a song. Weapons of war are broken. The weak are feeling strong. See, we no longer hunger, crying out for bread. Our God restores to life and raises us from the dead. All who are poor and lowly who have a heavenly home. The humble and the holy shall surely know shalom. God lives the needy from the ashes of despair, favors the outcasts and the downtrodden everywhere. The power of compassion can turn the world around. The firm in faith will fashion gardens from barren ground. Echoes of joy are found resounding from the tomb. A reading from the Hebrew Bible, the book of Judges, chapter 13, verses 2 through 7. Listen for the life of God stirring within and beyond these words of Scripture. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah of the tribe of the Danites, and his name was Manoah. His wife was barren. She had never given birth. And the messenger of the Holy One appeared to the woman and said to her, Look now, you are barren, having never given birth. You shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now, please be on guard not to drink wine or strong drink, and you shall not eat anything unclean. For look, you shall yet conceive and give birth to a son. No razor shall be upon his head, for a Nazarite to God shall the boy be from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and spoke to her husband, saying, Someone from God came to me, and their appearance was like that of a messenger of God, incredibly awesome. I did not ask the messenger from where they came, and their name they did not tell me. Yet they said to me, You shall conceive and give birth to a son. Do not drink wine or strong drink, and do not eat anything taboo. For a Nazarite to God shall the boy be from the womb until the day of his death. For the promise and covenant of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, we say together, Thanks be to God. This reading marks the third annunciation of a divine messenger proclaiming the birth of a child that we have covered since Advent began. First was Hagar. Second was Abraham and Sarah. Third is, well, third, we we don't know her name. She has a name, but I'm guessing folks thought her name didn't matter that she didn't matter, that her life did not matter, at least not as much as her husband's. We know his name, Manoah. In the larger narrative of Judges chapter 13, we come to know about both Manoah and uh, her. She is a woman of bold and courageous, daring faith. And Manoah is an obtuse and patriarchal jerk. 
Funny how that happens, right? He has his name written down for future generations, and she is just known as his wife, the one with a barren womb. But by God's covenantal promise, she will give birth to a son. His name? Samson. We know the story of Samson. He often gets portrayed as a hero, but his life fell far short of people's hopes and dreams. He enjoyed the company of women a little too much. He fell in love with Delilah. Delilah cut his hair. Samson lost his strength. His eyes were gouged out too. It's a violent story, to be sure. There is a final victory, but it's muted. Israel is not delivered, and Samson dies amidst the rubble. I still remember the artwork in the children's Bible my parents read to my brother and me when we were kids. We knew Samson was a flawed character at best, but we were still proud of him. Joseph, my brother, and I, we could not stand Delilah, though there are new interpretations of her character I've learned since childhood. Still, Samson was the hero of the story, or so we thought and chose to believe. There is, however, another hero, actually a shero in this story, but she was edited out of the children's Bible, just like her name wasn't preserved in the ancient text. She is the mother of Samson. She is the wife of Manoah. She holds court with the divine messenger and lives to tell the tale. The narrator of the text, who eliminates her name, describes her biology for hearers and readers. She is barren, the author says, which means her future, her familial line, was a dead-end street. To make matters worse, she and her husband, who are Israelites, are living under the captivity of the Philistines. The whole nation has acquiesced to a dismal lot in life. They see for themselves no future and no hope. Not only was she barren, the people were too, with no vision or faith in the promise of the Holy One who delivers, the one who can turn a barren landscape into something wondrous and flourishing. Everything changes, though, when a divine messenger interrupts her, an unnamed agent of God, human or angel, we're not quite sure yet, comes to her and says, Look now, you are barren, having never given birth. Now, had, had I been her, I might have said underneath my breath, well, tell me something I don't know. Or, I'm sorry, but <clears throat> who, the, who do you think you are coming up to me and talking about my body, my reproductive organs, and my life? She says nothing in response to God's courier. Given what happens next, she clearly understood who the messenger was and what they intended. She does, however, tell her husband, saying, Hey, uh, hey honey, uh, guess what? Someone from God came to me, and their appearance was like that of a messenger of God. Incredibly awesome. I did not ask the messenger from where they came, and their name they did not tell me. Yet they said to me, You shall conceive and give birth to a son. Though not part of our reading, the husband Manoah says, mm, sure, right. He prays to God about what she just said, and again the messenger appears, but only to her, not to him. After the second visit, she runs to her husband and says, uh, he's here again. And so this time Manoah comes with his wife, and they meet God's agent. Of course, he does the speaking and interrogates the unknown being. He asks, 
Now, when your words come true, what is to be the boy's rule of life? What is he to do? The angel answered with a stare that could kill. I have already covered this with your wife. Ask her. I'm pretty sure that put him in his place. He was going to have to listen and learn from his wife, which would probably be a first for him and for her too. As the story continues, the husband just seems like a bit of a buffoon. Even near the end of the chapter, he fears for his life, realizing that they have seen God and surely must die. The wife, however, reassures her forlorn husband, saying, Look, if God had wanted us dead, we'd be dead. Instead, we are called to life, to create life, and I am called to give birth. She is the shero of this story, and she has much to teach us, but we must first listen to her, which is probably a first for us. I cannot imagine what it's like to be known in a community, and to some extent by God, as barren. Who wants that label? Who wants to be known by a diagnosis or a status even? Baron brought with it negative connotations and people assumed the displeasure of God. The future looks bleak when you cannot have a child. And yet, God is no stranger to barrenness. Indeed, the woman of Judges 13 conceives in her old age, just as Sarah did, and just as Elizabeth will do in Luke's gospel. These women are sheroes in that they remind us that God can turn impossibilities into promises and dead-end streets into a new highway for God. When I think back on our three years together, we had a, a stint of 62 weeks in which things seemed rather barren, for lack of a better term. Imagine recording more than a year's worth of weekly worship services in an empty sanctuary. That experience, week after week, month after month, felt barren. Though I cannot speak for Evan and Diana who were critically important partners with our online worship during our separation, singing hymns in an empty sanctuary, preaching to empty pews, was about as challenging spiritually, mentally, and emotionally as anything I have experienced in my life. Life, church, ministry, all felt barren even at times lifeless. If we consider the witness of the woman of Judges chapter 13, if she is our shero of faith and a herald of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news, if we listen to her just like her husband had to do, then surely we must believe that God can and will work miracles when all seems Baron. This past weekend, I received an email from our first online family. They don't live in Northeast Ohio, but near the East Coast. They've been worshiping with us since Palm Sunday 2020. To hear them talk about it, they joined us because, one, they love the disciples' liturgy and the welcome to the table. Two, YouTube generates closed captions, and the lyrics we put on the screen are easy to read and follow. Three, they appreciate a progressive ethos and our proclamation of God's justice and joy, peace, and shalom. When we moved our worship online, I could have never imagined that we would have a presence 
from the Washington, D.C. area all the way to Palm Springs, California. Even if God's agent had come down and said, listen, things are about to get wild here. No in-person activities for the next year and 10 weeks, but you're going to find new life. Something new is going to be born in you, through you. I'm not sure that any of us, myself included, would have believed it. But thanks be to God for women, sheroes of the faith, women of the East, who emailed and said, we're here and we just want you to know that we're with you. They have become sheroes for me and indeed for our whole church. In fact, I don't think it's wrong to say that they are God's messengers. They have said that life can spring forth even from the most barren landscape. The angel promised the woman long ago that the child she will bear will begin, but not finish, delivering Israel from the hand of the Philistines. It's true that deliverance does begin at some level. We are quickly approaching the birth of the Christ child. We've heard the witness of another Shiro, one named Mary, who has told us about the work of God that the child in her womb will live to do. There is oh so much from which our world needs to be delivered right now. Greed, racism, pride, just to name a few. I wonder if that which is being born in us will continue the work of God's deliverance that started so long ago. We will not finish the work, but we can continue it, further it, by following the example of Shiro's, like the woman of Judges 13, Hagar, Sarah, Elizabeth, and Mary. Amen.
As we come to this time of prayer, there is a link in the below video description that opens to our church website. There you can name your joys and concerns. Your requests come directly to me and with your permission become part of our weekly ministry memo and the prayers of the people. It is our pleasure and joy to hold your request deep within our hearts as we speak your names to the very heart of God. Our prayer of the people in this emerging experience of worship is an alternative to the ways in which we normally pray. This prayer is not passive, but active. This is a body prayer, one that will engage our full selves, and I invite you to participate in ways that are helpful and create meaning for you. So for our first move, will you lift your arms and place them in an X and let us pray. Oh God, so much feels like a barren landscape for us right now. This pandemic will not end. In fact, it's getting worse. Hospitals are overcrowded. Deaths are rising. And another variant is already here. And rumor has it that it's the most contagious one yet. This is a whole heck of a lot, and it makes us feel like the landscape of our lives resembles more of a desolate desert than green pastures and still waters. We know and trust through the witness of faithful and faith-filled women, she rose, that you can bring life when hope seems lost. So will you do that once again for us even now. For our second move, will you bring out your arms in a position of strength and flex every muscle you've got, and let us continue our prayer. God of Hagar, Sarah, the woman of Judges 13, Hannah, Elizabeth, and Mary, we are inspired by the witness of strong women We realize that women's presence, experience, and even their names have been redacted from Scripture, but we seek to reclaim them, know them, and celebrate them as messengers in our time who have so much to teach us. May their strength inspire our own as we seek to continue the work of deliverance that you started so long ago. For our final move, will you bring your hands toward your heart in a posture of devotion and let us continue our prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the below video description is a link that opens to our online giving portal. There you can make your gifts, tithes, and offerings. Know that we will steward the first fruits of your labor toward the future God wants and ultimately will have as we seek to fulfill God's mission from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. So, dear friends, give generously as you are able. Finally, we come to this sacred meal. And here we receive gifts of bread and wine. This table is not a barren landscape but one from which life springs anew. And you are welcome and wanted here. And the invitation is unconditional. On the night Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room, he first washed his hands, and then looking upon the table, he found gifts of both grain and grape. And taking the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks for it, said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Drink of it, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. 
For as long as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we experience the promise of new life, even amidst a barren landscape. So come, beloved, you are welcome and wanted here, and everything is ready. Go into the world, beloved, and make a plain declaration and a public demonstration of the very best, most beautiful gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Embody this gospel that is alternative to the ways of the world because the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. Remember that you are never, ever very far from God's heart. And finally, Finally, trust with everything you've got and all that you are that the future God wants and ultimately will have is being born in you and in me. Amen.